If the Lord done anything for you, you ought to tell him, you made a. Now, if you really have had God do something, say, you made a. Come on, you ought to think about one thing he's done for you. Say, you made a way. Come on, say it like you mean it. You Oh, come on, let's worship him in this place. Come on, let's worship the Lord. You made a way, Lord. Come on, you made a way, you made a way, Lord. Nothing I've done on my own, but you made a way. If it had not been for the Lord on my side, you... Come on, say it like you mean it, you made a way. Come on, now let's just give him the hallelujah. Come on, bless your name, God. We love you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for making a way. We thank you for making a way out of no way. We realize it was you, Lord, that made a way. We didn't do it on our own. We didn't do it on our own, but you made a way. We didn't do it on our own, but you made the way. God, you did it. You did it. You worked it out. You blessed us. You've kept us. Have your way in here tonight. Bless this holy name. Put your hands together and honor God in this place. Our dear sister needs no introduction to Southeastern Connecticut. She's well known in our area. She's a gifted woman of God, a psalmist, a praise and worship leader, a woman of God, woman of great faith and uh, I know also she has a new CD that's out, that's out in the lobby. You can pick it up when this service is over. I'm just excited to have her come. This is her first time preaching here at Shiloh. So I want you to give her a blessed Shiloh welcome as we welcome our sister from our sister church at New Life. Come on, let's thank God for Minister Crystal Livingston. Come on, let's give God a praise for her. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Whew. He's worthy. He's so worthy. He is so worthy. Hallelujah, God. Bless your name, Jesus. Bless your name, O oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just want to first thank God for being here tonight. I thank God that so many things could have happened. They would have happened. They should have happened, but they did not. Grace and mercy covered and followed me. So I'm thankful for being here tonight. God bless you, Bishop and Lady Watts. I thank God for you. Thank God for you. Minister Tasha, thank you so much for just blessing me and being there for me. And I thank God for my pastors, Pastors Johnny and Sharon Burns, amen. Hallelujah, and all of the ministers and friends in the house. And as Pastor said, I have a new song out, and if you don't mind, I just want to share it with you tonight. Starts off, and I'm just going to do a little something at the beginning, and then we're going to start that song. For he knows me better, much better. Than anyone else, and he takes better, better care of me than I can for myself. Ooh. Come on and give God a praise if you know that He's done great things for you. Let's start that CD up. Come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. Song says great things. He keeps on doing great things. He keeps, come on, doing great things for me. He keeps on doing great things for me. Can I get a witness right here? 
sing the song he keeps he keeps doing great things. If he's done anything for you, let me hear you praise the Lord. If he brought you through, let me see you wave your hands. Oh, he's doing great things. He's doing great things. Doing, doing great things. He's doing great things. Yes, he has. He woke you up this morning. He started you on your way. He let you say, yeah. Brand new day. Oh, he's doing great things. Doing great things. Great, 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 great thing. Yes, he is. He woke me up this morning. I'm in my right mind. He keeps on blessing me. And it does not right on time. Oh, he's doing great things. Doing great things. Just think of the goodness. Oh, Jesus, what he's done. He's doing great things. He's doing great things. He's doing great things. Yeah. He keeps doing great things for me. Come on, put your hands together if you know it. He keeps on doing great things for me. One more.
one more time, let me hear your testimony. Say, he keeps on doing great things. Y'all sound like a blessed church tonight. Yeah, 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 yeah. He keeps doing, doing great things for me. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hey, hey. Hallelujah, hallelujah. I don't know about you, but within the last couple of weeks, I've seen him do great things. Not just good things, but great things, Bishop. Great things, Lady Watts. I mean, above and beyond, he's blown my mind. If that's your testimony, just think about it. Put your hands together for the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Thank you, God. Doing great things for me. Glory to God. He's so awesome, so mighty, and so powerful. And I'm just blessed that that is indeed my testimony, that he keeps on doing great things. But I didn't come to have testimony service tonight. We'll save that for another time. But I came to bring forth the word that I didn't realize, <laughs> I didn't realize I was going to be delivering this, meaning that God had woke me up at four o'clock in the morning on February 5th before church. I don't know about you, but I like to get my sleep in before church. Uh-huh, because doing praise and worship, that's like, you know, that's another job in and of itself, and I, I, you know, I like my sleep. But on February 5th at 4 o'clock in the morning, the Lord woke me up suddenly, and I just began to walk around my house, and he began to speak to me. And I went and I sat in my bed, and I began to write. I'd never done this before, but I literally wrote an entire sermon at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I said, Lord okay, I don't know what, is, what this is for. I don't have any engagements lined up. Nobody's called me, but okay, thus saith the Lord. And I'm okay with that. No, don't get me wrong. I'm not trying to be like, oh, I need to be, you know, called. No, mm -mm. But I was saying, Lord, what, it, what is this for? And little did I know that a few weeks later, I would get a call from Bishop Watts. And, and I looked at the phone and I'm like, I don't know who this is. And usually you don't pick up the phone. But I picked up the phone and I said, hello, how you doing, Minister Crystal? Oh. I said, oh, all right, hey, Bishop. And he asked me to speak tonight. <laughs> Ain't God good? He's so remarkable. I still didn't even know, Bishop, that I was going to be speaking this, but the Lord brought it back to my remembrance and said, that's it. That's why. And for the last couple of days, I've been moving I've had a lot of things on my mind with my family and, and with work. It's just been go, go, go. And he knew that I was not going to have the time to sit before him right before this was going to happen. What an awesome God that we serve. My God. Oh, my God. So again, thank you, Bishop. Tonight, we're going to just, I know it's Lenten service, and I'm going to tie it in, but the Lord had given me this word. And the title of it says, whatever he says to you, do it. Just don't even talk to anybody else. Just put your hand on yourself and say, whatever he says to me, do it. Let's do that one more time. Whatever he says to me, do it. Hallelujah. My scripture reference is John 2. 1 through 12. And is there somebody that can just read that really quickly? I failed to actually write the entire thing out. Actually, it's right in front of me. Praise the Lord. Look at technology. Won't he do it? <laughs> I'm just going to read it right off the screen. Praise the Lord. It says, on the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Now both Jesus and his disciples were invited to the wedding, and when they ran out of wine, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. Jesus said to her, woman, what does your concern have to do with me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Now there was, set up, there was a set of 
the, excuse me, there were set there six water pots of stone, according to the manner of purification of the Jews, containing 20 or 30 gallons apiece. Jesus said to them, fill the water pots with water, and they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, draw some out now and take it to the master of the feast. And they took it. When the master of the feast had tasted the water that, had made, that was made wine, he said he didn't know where it came from, but the servants who had drawn the water knew. The master of the feast called the bridegroom, and he said to him, every man at the beginning sets out the good wine, and when the guests have well drunk, then the inferior. You have kept the good wine until now. This beginning of signs Jesus did in Cana of Galilee and manifested his glory, and his disciples believed in him. And if after this, he went down to Capernaum, he, his mother, his brothers, and his disciples, and they did not stay there many days. Amen? The word of the Lord is already blessed. And so I'm just going to give it to you how God gave it to me tonight. So when we look at the scripture, we have Mary... We have Jesus and the disciples at a wedding, a celebration. Isn't that great? And Mary notices the wine is running out and says to Jesus, they ain't got no wine. No, no, okay, let me preface this. I'm a dramatic person, okay? So forgive me if I get a little dramatic with it. You know, I'm, I'm in charge of our drama ministry, so if I act things out, you know, people be like, Mary ain't say it like that. That's just my interpretation, Amen. <laughs> <laughs> so she turns to Jesus and said, they, they have no wine. Somebody say, Mary knew what Jesus could do. And Jesus responds by asking Mary, what does this concern me? Or, or I like how the Amplified Version puts it, what is this to you and me? My time to act and be revealed has not yet come. And Mary doesn't even respond. <laughs> the scripture doesn't even say, well, Mary said, well, Jesus, you know, come on. Mary acted like mama. How many of y'all know about being mama? Sometimes you just override what your child says. Just listen, servants, this is what you do. Okay, so Mary just overrides Jesus as she says to the servants, whatever he says to you, do it. Jesus, I like this because Jesus falls in line with his mother. Okay, this is Jesus talking, right? This is Jesus. He falls in line with his mother and commands the servants to fill the water pots with water. I like the fact that even in himself, even him being Jesus, he obeyed his mother. I like the fact that he was submitting to the woman that raised him, that was chosen from among many women to raise him. He submitted, and I like that. The one thing that I have to realize is that instructions were given. Mary gave instructions to the servants. And as a result of that, instructions begin to yield a shift or a move of God. Can I say that one more time? Instructions begin to shift and allow for a move of God to happen. Instructions, what they do is they set order. They give direction and structure so that God can dwell in and produce change and miracles through and for his people. Can I say that one more time? Instructions, they set order. They give direction and structure so that God can dwell and produce change and miracles through and for his people. Now, we look back in the Old Testament, we see stuff like Noah's Ark and how God gave him specifics on how to build the ark and with what. Now, Noah didn't know anything about, they didn't know anything about rain. Rain, what is that? All the mist came up from the ground, but he still was obedient with the instructions. We look at the Ark of the Covenant and the, the specificity of the instructions of how to build it and what textures to use and what materials to use. And so here we look at the instructions at the wedding of Cana, and we see that God is in the midst. He's about to move and do something great. Amen? Amen. So Proverbs 11 and 14 says, where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Again, instructions are important. 
that's why it's so important, and I, I can say this because, you know, we're family. It's so important to understand that we have to follow the instructions of our leaders. And I know that when it comes to our bishop and our pastors, we do that. But how many of you know that leadership is multi-tiered? And so if I, as maybe the, 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 uh, the minister of music of my church, say, choir, it's time to sing. And y'all are like, no, 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 no. It's time to sing. There's a move of God happening, and there's a call for you to get in place. If we're slothful and slow and kind of hesitation, there's a hesitation there, the move of God can't come in like he wants to. Not because of, he can't, but because we're stopping him from doing what he has to do. Amen? So instructions are important to follow. Amen? Habakkuk uh, 2 Verse 2 and 3 says, Then the Lord replied, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets, that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet an appointed time, but at the end it will speak and it shall not lie. God already knows the outcome when he gives us instructions. That's just point blank. If God asks me to move to the left, he already knows that by, on the right hand side I'm going to get sideswiped. So why would I not follow an all-knowing God? Doesn't make sense, right? He's purposeful. He's strategic. He's intentional. And everything works together for my good because I love God and I'm called according to his purpose. So whatever he says, do it. Say that with me. Whatever he says, do it. Okay, all right. So we go back to the text. And we see Mary's command of whatever he says, do it. It implies a sense of urgency, right? When you say do it, just do it. Or like Nike says, just do it. That doesn't mean, well, kind of, you know, you, you know, might want to, no, do it. There's a sense of urgency there and a need for quick action with no procrastination. Now I'm going to put myself on front street a little bit. I like being transparent if that's all right, talking about urgency and just doing it. At the beginning of the year, the Lord dealt with me mightily about procrastination. Oh, yeah, I heard a couple of, oh, oh yeah. Mm. How many of you know about procrastination? Yeah, Lord, help us, Jesus. Oh, God. Yeah, I'm a work in progress, but he dealt with me, so it, it's gotten better. But he gave me a word of correction and warning. My God. I remember I was washing dishes at my sink, and he said, in this season, you cannot procrastinate. He said, procrastination, if it was continued in my life, I'm not trying to hurt nobody, but he said, in my life, it could kill, it would kill my babies, my ministry, my dreams, my visions, everything that he had given to me, that he had birthed through me, that I had birthed, procrastination could and would kill it. I said, what? Like, no, Lord, like, no. Like, yes, if you choose to procrastinate, not me, because I'm an on-time God, but if you choose to procrastinate, you will kill literally kill everything I've given to you and that you have birthed. I said, oh my God. He said, listen, procrastination is not a character characteristic of mine. He said, it's not an attribute of mine. I don't dwell in procrastination. He said, I'm a God of order, structure, and intentional timeliness or timeliness with a purpose. He continued to tell me that everything that he does is done perfectly and is perfectly timed. He told me, and this is what blew my mind, he said procrastination is disobedience. Wait a minute, Lord, I know I love you, God, you know I ain't gonna try. No, procrastination is disobedience. I said, oh my God. When I tell you I felt so crumbled. He said, listen, when I tell you I put something on your heart, guess what? My will and my timing 
go hand in hand. You could do the right thing at the right time and it's right. You could do the wrong thing at the wrong time and it's wrong. You could do the right thing at the wrong time and it is wrong. So when I choose to do some things and I'm a little slothful with it and I'm dragging along and I don't, Lord, I don't know, he says it's wrong. Because I told you to do that 10 minutes ago. I told you to sit down and write a, a new song and you procrastinated. So guess what? Somebody else is writing it. I said, oh my God. I told you to say hello to that woman across the street just now. Just say hi. But you didn't realize that she walked down the street and possibly just killed herself. I told you to just do it just now. I told you to pick up the phone and call your cousin. You didn't know what she was going through. You didn't know what he was going through, but you said, you know, I'll call, I'll call him later. I'll call him. I'll just, you know. I, you don't know what they were going through at that particular time for you to be that blessing. It was tough. It was tough. And so he said, it is disobedience. The Lord said, his procrastination is as rebellion and rebellion is as witchcraft. First Samuel 15 and 23. Because when we delay, we prohibit the move of God in our situation. He doesn't, he, he doesn't procrastinate, but we cause the move of God to be stagnant. And also, those who are attached to the miracle get affected by it. Not just us, but those people around us that are attached to the move of God through us are affected because we delayed and we moved out the timing of God. Out the will of God, yeah, we, we understand that concept, but we don't get the concept of moving outside the timing of God. Whatever he says to you, do it. And so God doesn't force himself on anybody, but he gives us free will to do it. And hopefully by the end of the night, you will remember in those times where he speaks to you and whatever he says to you, to just do it. So we go back to the story in verse 7, and we see that Jesus commands the servants to go and fill the pots up with water, and the Bible says that they filled up to the brim. And again, these are specific instructions from Jesus, and the servants, they don't hesitate. They don't stare at him like, what, Jesus, what? How many times you've been in, in a situation where you've asked somebody to do something, you, what, what, me, what, huh? They don't do that. They, they, they just do it. Okay, I don't know who this man is, but because remember, he didn't, he, this was his first miracle. So they didn't know him like Jesus, like we knew him later on. They just said, okay, I don't know who this man is, but you know what? Mama done told us to follow him. Okay, All right. Mary, yes, ma'am. Okay, he said, okay, yes, sir. And they just did it. And what I like about that is they became, they went down in history because their obedience expedited the first miracle that we see in the book, in the Bible. Their obedience expedited this. Jesus could have simply blinked and the water would have turned to wine. But there's something about using ordinary people to expedite the miracles. And there's something about what he wants to do with us, us ordinary people. He could simply snap, a, listen, he could think about it and something happens, but he chooses to use ordinary people for extraordinary things. I don't know about you, but I'm humbled to think that the Lord could use me in my mess, use me at my worst to do such an extraordinary thing if I obey and if I do what he says to do. Amen? Our obedience with regard to what God says and when he says to do it can expedite premier miracles in our lives. If you've never seen God move or the frequency of God's power in your life has decreased, I encourage you to check yourself. Am I being obedient to what he's telling me to do? Because more than likely when the power of God is not flowing through us, it has nothing to do with God. Nothing to do with God. God is all right. He's going to be all right. He's always going to be all right. He's been all right. He is all right. All of that. But most of the times, we, I don't feel God. 
I just don't feel them like I used to. I, I don't understand. My money's funny. My change is strange. I don't, uh. Most of the time, it's us. Did you, did you pay your tithes? Did you pay your offering? Did you sow a love gift when Bishop said to sow a love gift? What did you do? Check your obedience level. And I guarantee you, when you make the right adjustments, you're going to see God, just like he did, just like Jesus did in the text. The, the miracles will be expedited through your obedience. Amen? Let me just, let's just put our hands together. I know it's tough. I know it's tough. But God is, he's speaking to us, and he, all, he does all things well. So this is for a reason. This is for a reason. He wants to bless his people. He wants to create miracles and do miracles through and in us in this season. So that's why he's just, he's just shaking us up a little bit. The Bible said he chastises, chastises whom he loves. Amen? So he loves us. It's all right. It's okay. Bishop, they like, we ain't inviting her back. She done beat us up. Just sing a song. <laughs> Oh, hallelujah. Thank you, God. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> so <laughs> we go back to verse 7, and Jesus continues with his instructions. And the miraculous has already been done at this point, and he tells his servants after they've already filled the pots, he says, go and give the host or the official, the head official of the event, go give them what you got. And so, okay, they did it again. They obeyed what he said. And when the head official of the event bore witness to the miracle, he declared the miracle. Let me say that again. When the head official at the event bore witness to the miracle, the water into wine, he declared the miracle. What am I saying? God will allow people, important people, to see what he has done in you for what? For he can get the glory. I, I, Listen, I, I, I understand the concept of your gifts will make room for you. I get it now. I didn't quite understand it before, but I understand what it means to be, a, I'll say, an ordinary person. Um, I, I say sometimes a nobody, but I am somebody, amen? And I, <laughs> and I understand what it means to just have, you know, music and, and have word just open doors for you. And it's not about me. It has nothing to do with Crystal A. Livingston, except for the fact that when I get to that place of being exalted, for lack of better words, that I can point people to whom I serve. I can give God glory. I can lift him up. He said, if I, if I lift him up, he'll draw all men unto himself. So, so the purposes of being out there and being exposed and being uh, brought before famous people and, and important people, it's not about me but it's about the one who sent me. It's about him. And, and there are a lot of times where we sing, for your glory, I will do anything just to see you. And we love that song, don't we? We love it, right? But how many of us will actually do anything? For your glory, I will do no, you won't. You won't. You won't. If God told you, I need you to start writing tonight, just write one page. Yep, you look just like that. Mm mm. Mm mm. I love you. That's how I was messing with you. But you, you mm mm. I've done it before. God told me to get up and write, and I'm like, Lord, I got two more hours. Just mm Just want to turn over. For your glory, I will do. Mm mm. Oh, well, how many of us have been told to go back to school? But, but my finances, I, I, God, where am I supposed to get this? If he told you, then he knows how he's going to get you there, right? Okay, all right. But we singing, for your glory, I will do. Okay. Verse 11 says, the beginning of miracles manifested forth his glory, and his disciples believed on him. Whatever he says to you, do it. Listen, I know it's Lenten season, so I thought about how I could tie just this reflection of this subject into, or, or excuse me, I thought about how this subject could be tied into Lenten season. And I thought about the ultimate sacrifice. Jesus himself 
obeys the call and the purpose on his life. I don't know any other example in history where somebody went through what he went through and still chose to go through it. If it were me, I tell you, one whip of the lash and I would have been out for the count. Done, I would have like acted, fainted, whatever, but you could not, no. No, but Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, who was 100% God, 100% man, according to the hypostatic union, said, I am going to go and do what my father has called me to do. I understand that I have a purpose. I understand that there is something greater than what I could even imagine. I understand what I'm here for, and I've got to do what God, my father, has called me to do. Whatever he says to do, I will do it. He had a purpose-driven life, and I'm so thankful that he did. He knew without his miraculous blood that, that we wouldn't be here today. So he chose to walk in obedience on a journey to the cross. And even at his weakest hour, Jesus still endured the journey. Luke 22 and 42 says, Father, if thou be willing, remove this cup from me. Nevertheless, not my will, but thine be done. In Matthew 26 and 53, Jesus says, do you think I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than 12 legions of angels? I can do what I want to do because I am God, but I am choosing to do what my father says, not because of me, because I can just ascend back up and I'll be all right, but I'm doing it for you and for you and for you and for you and for you. I am doing whatever he tells me to do. I can do whatever. I can call on my father and boom, just like that, angels come and get me. Matter of fact, I don't even need the angels. But guess what? I am going to stay here and endure like no one else has or ever will have. And I am going to do it because I love you, because I care about you, because I know you won't be here unless I have to do what I have to do. Whatever he says to me, I've got to do it. Okay, so let's, let's go back into the scripture a little bit. That was your Lenten lesson, amen? <laughs> no, that thing is real. That thing is so real to me. I thank God for, being, for Jesus being obedient. That's powerful. That's, that, that's Jesus. And yet still we as human beings think ourselves bigger and decide not to do something that our Father has asked us to do. How dare we? And I'm guilty of it. But I thank God for grace and mercy. My God, I thank God for grace and mercy. Because if God decided to take me out because of something I decided to do, I would not be here today. How many times have we told the Lord, no, I can't, I don't know, I wouldn't, but he still chooses to allow us to wake up with brand new mercies and covered by grace. Give God a hand for his grace and his mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, God. So we look at verse 10, and the head official tastes the wine, and he says to the bridegroom, he says, listen, every, every party I go to, every, every shindig I go to, the good wine is at the beginning. And then when the people get drunk, that's when they put out the, the weaker version. He said, but, but you... You guys got the good wine out now? What? What kind of? This is, this is different. The good wine is out at the end of the party? Okay. Somebody just say the good wine. The good wine. Uh-huh. Guess what? The delay of a thing does not have to be a denial. The delay of a thing does not have to be a denial. And so just as we admitted and we repented internally, we said, God, you know, there's some things that I procrastinated on. There's some dreams that I put aside. There's some goals that I put away. There's some visions that you've given me. And I've said, no, guess what? God is saying to us because of grace and mercy, he has allowed us to have another chance to do what he says. 
So he says the time is now for action. No more excuses, no more fears, no more distractions. Hello, somebody. No more I can't, no more I won't. Get that petty spirit out of here. No more petty patty and petty Peter. Hello. No more reflecting on my failures and what I didn't do in the past. New grace and mercy. No more I didn't do it before. The past is the past. All things have become new. Amen? All things have become new. God wants to use us to expedite his miracles in the world. He wants to use us to, to do things. The Bible says, verily, verily, I say unto you, this is Jesus in John 4, 14 and 12. He that believeth in me, the works that I do, shall he do also. And greater works than these shall he do, because I go to the Father. He wants to do greater works through us. He wants the volume of what we do to be greater than he could ever do. But how can we do that if we don't obey? How can we do that if he tells us to do something and we choose not to? We are to be the conduits of change in the earth. And it's time for the good wine. We think that we've seen signs and wonders up until this point. Well, baby, let me tell you something. Get ready because revival is happening in the land like never before. I'm from the Bronx, and I always, you know, I go back to the Bronx. I say it's about to be on and popping. It's about to be on and popping. The world is not, I mean, listen, we think we've seen things happen and we have yet in the Americas to really see some like powerful miracles. You go to some other countries, I mean, people are walking up from the casket and going through the door. If that happens here in Connecticut, people will fall out and probably be in a casket next. I'm just saying. I don't know, you know, people, we talk about follow, you know, let the signs and wonders and the dead get raised and people ain't ready. Limbs about to be, you know, stretched and everything. You probably fall out just at the, but God wants to do that in us. If we're obedient, he wants us to go to somebody and say, be healed. And all of a sudden I can see. He wants us to be able to grab somebody's hand when they're crying. And all of a sudden they're laughing because they're joyful. He wants us to be able to go up to somebody and say, you know what? I see in the spirit that there's something going on in your household. He wants us to be changed in the world. But whatever he says to you, you've got to do it. Whatever he says to me, I've got to do it. Because if he tells me to do it, he knows that I can do it. Amen? Listen, there's some things that when we think about the good wine, the world is, they're thinking that Christianity and holiness is fizzling out and fading away, that we've lost our power. But God is raising up a people who are about to bring out the good wine. We are empowered even now with the freshness I declare and decree it. We are empowered with the freshness, with the rejuvenation for the things of God. And I declare and decree on tonight that revival is taking place in the land. It's taking place. I played church long enough. I played and pittered, pattied, and, and like my mom says, bump fumbled around too much for me not to be in a position where I can pray for somebody and the answer come just like that. I got too much power, too much dudamus power, Holy Spirit power to just be sitting around and not doing nothing with it. I want to sing and watch people get healed right there because of the notes that I hit. I want to dance before the Lord and watch somebody get delivered from schizophrenia. I want to lift my hands and say, Father, listen, brother, be healed. And I want to see him be healed. Time out for I can't, I won't, I shall not. Whatever he says, do it. Good wine. We're talking about good wine. Listen, folks that wrote us off and said that we're done and out for the count are about to see a new and improved person step out. I'm talking about the good wine. Family members that slept on us, and I could talk about it. I'm the baby of six children, and they all, praise the Lord, amen. 
They call me Holy Roller. They call me Minister the Church Girl. I said, you don't even understand. You're about to be right with me in Jesus' name. They slept on us. They call you Jesus freak, fanatic. You go to church too much. Well, guess what? In the name of Jesus, I call you holy. You will, you will be right there in church with me. As for my house, me and my house, we will serve the Lord. If I'm a Jesus freak, you're going to be a Jesus freak too. In Jesus' name. Run, tell that. The good wine. Co-workers, they looking at you funny. And how she, how she get promoted? What, what he doing? What he, who he, mm, I'll leave that alone. What are they doing to get where they're at? They ain't got no degree. They ain't got no experience. I got the experience. Guess what? I got favor. There you go. Boom, clack, clack. Run, tell that. I'm talking about the good wine, the things that people need to see in order to understand the God I serve, the favor that's on my life. I didn't study to go into sales. I can't even tell you what. Listen, I didn't do anything to be where I am today, but it was the favor of God on my life. So when I get in a position of director of sales at the Hilton Garden Inn, the Hampton Inn, and they look at my credentials and they say, well, sis, well, they don't say sis, but... <laughs> Miss Miss Livingston, you you have a degree in forensic science, and your master's is in national security. That doesn't quite go with sales. And did you go to college for sales? No. Oh, did you take a class at Hilton? Well, after I got into the position, um, how did you get into the favor of God on my life, wisdom from on high, instruction from on high, a brain power from on high, memory from on high. I'm talking about the good wine, the good wine, the good wine. Some of you, are, listen, some of you are, have been deemed medical mysteries. Some of you, the doctors have said, I don't know. I simply don't know what's wrong. You spent your money on tests. You've been to this doctor. You've been to this specialist. You've been to this. God is about to show out in your life. You are about to be the good wine. Church members put you in the back. They said, oh, that's, that's brother so-and-so. He, he ain't doing nothing. You know, that sister so-and-so, she about to just dance for a little bit, and you know. They called you, whatever, lazy bones, whatever. But they're about to see God transform and turn things around and use you and stir up the gifts like never before. I'm talking about the good wine. And just like the official said, I don't, I don't know where this came from, but guess what? This is good wine. I declare and decree tonight. March, what is this, the 21st, 22nd, 21st, 2017, that this is the time, this is the season, this is the event of God, that we are going to be the examples in the earth. We are going to be the salt in the earth. We are going to be the light that is not hid on top of a hill, that the world will see through our actions, that the world will see through our voice, that the world will see through our songs, that the world will see through our writings, that the world will see that as we walk to and fro, they will see the glory of God in the earth. I declare it and decree it. If you understand what I'm talking about and you agree with me, just say, I am the good wine. I am the good wine. I am the good wine. I am the thing that the people are going to see and they're going to understand that it's not about me, but they're going to understand that this is a God thing. I am the good wine. You know why? Because whatever he says to me, I'm going to do it. I know in the past I've tried it and I failed, but that's all right. I know in the past I haven't done my best and I know I procrastinated and I know I fell asleep and I slumbered and I was slothful, but hallelujah, I thank God for grace and mercy. I thank God for mercies that I knew every morning. I thank God for the word of correction. I thank God for the word of warning. I thank God for his love, mercy, and grace. 
that he cares enough for me that he would tell me, daughter, get it together, get it together. I have some things for you to do, but I need you to listen to me and whatever I tell you to do, I need you to open up your ears and hear the instructions from me. I need you to write down the vision. I need you to make it plain. I need you to tell the people whatever I tell you to do. I need you to just do it. I need you to just do it. This season is too quick. Things are happening too quickly. Every day I feel like I'm in another month. I'm like, Lord, we just caught out of January. I just celebrated a birthday. Now we're in February. No, we're in March. Wait, next week is April. It's happening quickly. So just as the seasons are changing and everything is happening quickly, guess what? We got to be just as quick. No time. No time. No time. No time. No time. I'm trying to tell the people of God, my ministry, they know I've been speaking this thing. We don't have time to waste. People of God, I'm telling you, we don't have time to waste. So whatever he tells you to do, I'm telling you, you just do it. If he tells you to get up at night at 2 o'clock in the morning, just do it. If he tells you to walk to the left side of the street immediately, just do it. If he tells you to take out $5 out of your pocket and give it to somebody, just do it. If he tells you to help out somebody, just do it. You might be there healing. If he tells you to call your grandmother that you haven't spoke to in five years and tell her, I love you, grandmama, just do it. 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 Whatever he says, whatever he says, whatever you say, Lord, whatever you say, Lord, I'm going to do it, God. I repent of my sins. I ask for your forgiveness, God. We ask for your forgiveness tonight, Lord God. We don't want to be slothful, God. We don't want to be disobedient, God. We don't want to be rebellious, God. We want to do what you called us to do, God. We want to be obedient, God. We want to walk in line with your word, God. We want to talk in line with your word, God. We want to do whatever you called us to do, God. We want to do it. 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 Lift your hand up to the Lord and say, I'll do it. 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 Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I'll do it. 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 I'll do it, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. Just think about one thing that the Lord has told you to do. Get that one thing in your mind right now. Whatever it is, I don't care what it is. Think about it. I'll give you a few seconds. And say, Lord, whatever you say, from this day forward, I'm not looking back. I'm moving forward. And whatever you say, I promise you, Lord, I'll do it. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>